It's a quick shot video. I'm going to give you my settings for 3 mil Baltic Birch. You can try out on your bolt today on LaserNug. So my fill settings, I have it at 400 millimeters per second, 30 and 30 for min and max power, and I'm running at 300 lines per inch. My score settings, it's on a line. I've got it at 150 millimeters per second, 20 and 20. And my cut is at 20 millimeters per second, 63 and 63% power. Give them a try. Let me know how they work out for you. If nothing else, it gives you a good, I think, safe place to start. And you can start playing with your own settings from there on whether it's on lines per inch, speed, or your power settings to get what you think is right for you or the output that you prefer. Let's get into a little background and context. So first thing up, I wanted to recommend that if you have not yet picked up some of these little tools called lay flat pins, I showed them to you in a different video. I'll put a link to it here if you'd like. There's a number of different people on Etsy that sell this similar type of uh, an arrangement. And you'll see I use it all the time now, especially on my thinner ply, because it tends to crown or warp and literally it'll change by day depending on the humidity and the temperature in the room, but they help to keep your material flat so you're not lasering over a hump or a crown in the wood. Super handy. As I was trying to narrow down my settings, I wanted to try it across a number of different types of designs or outputs so that I could make sure it was consistent repeatedly over different types of designs or outputs. Because I thought that once it started to look good on one, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna have the same quality or consistency if I start doing something that's a little more detailed or has a lot more area engraved. So across all of these, I finally narrowed in and I, I'd have to say that the biggest surprise came with the engraved settings and I'll explain why. What surprised me the most as I was testing through my different engraved settings was I just assumed that the higher resolution or the higher lines per inch, almost like a picture, you know, higher DPI, the better quality of the output. But it was actually kind of the reverse for me. I tested between, I think, 280 and up to about 450 DPI or lines per inch. And I found that the higher I went, the worse it got. Let me show you an example. This output was at 400 lines per inch. And this output was at 300 lines per inch. And you can see the one here at the higher DPI with the same engraved settings came out much messier, so to speak. This one came out much cleaner and much darker, which I prefer, because I wanted a nice, dark, full, rich look to the wood when I was done. I found that the higher DPI left a lot more residue, or I don't think this is scorching, I'm pretty sure it's just discoloration from the laser. Whereas these outputs at 300 DPI came out much cleaner, especially around the letters and around the detail in the design itself. So that's how I landed at 300 DPI. Interesting contrast though. On the cut layer, I tested between 50 and 70 power, as well as between 20 and 30 millimeters per second. And I found a combination of either it would cut sometimes all the way through, but just barely. And depending on the crown or the warp in the wood, most of it would cut, but then I'd have to snap the back out of the other. I also found that if your power is high and your speed is too low, you're going to get a lot more scorching around the cut. And in some cases you'll get, I think they call it flashback, where you start to get scorching on the back of the piece. So these results came out of a number of different combinations. I could actually cut successfully at 20 millimeters per second and about 53% power, but only once. And as I kept repeating it through different designs or different cuts, I found that depending on where I was on the board, it either wouldn't go all the way through or it went most of the way through, but then I had to snap the piece out, which left splits at the back. So that's where I got the cut layers from. When the piece is done, in most cases I had virtually no scoring anywhere. 
and you might get the odd little bit of residue. So I did finally use this stuff, which is supposed to be for wood. It's called Laser Clean Plus. It wasn't bad, but didn't do an excellent job. Not to mention you have to wait for the piece to dry after you've squirted it down and wiped it down with a rag to try to get that residue off or that browning. I found what worked best was just a simple sanding pad. It's 220 grit, nice light sanding. That's all it took. If you have an air compressor, you could blow it off and then wipe it down. I didn't want to power mine up, so I just gave it a quick little sand, especially around the edges. Wiped it down with a bit of a damp rag, and it came out clean, nice and clean. Darker engraving, nice clean finish, unlike this piece, where you'll see there's just a lot of residue and a lot of browning around the bottom of this where you see the words outdoors. I wanted to finish off this video today and just show you how to add new materials to the materials library. If you've been following the channel, you'll know about a week and a half ago, I released a video to show you where you can find a really nice starter material library on Thunder Laser USA's knowledge base. If you didn't see that video, I'll put the link above me. Check it out. It's super easy to download. You just need to know how, but it's in their knowledge base and it gives you a number of different materials. The nice thing about it is, Although you'll continue using a notebook as you're trying to test through different variations or combinations of settings, when you finalize settings, instead of leafing back through your notebook to figure out what page you had it on, you can very easily add it as another material and new settings to your library. Let me show you how to do that because I'm going to throw in my 3 mil Baltic Birch settings now. I have my three settings, my fill, my score, and my cut layer for Baltic Birch, and I'm going to add it to the library. So I'm going to click, for example, on my engrave. I'm going to go down to the bottom and you'll see the toggle between the laser and the library. I'm going to click library and I'm going to create new material to add to the library. So I'm going to create from layer. I've already started it. It's Baltic Birch 3 mil. The thickness. I'm going to, I'm not sure if the thickness matters, but I'm going to put it in for reference. It's 1 8 inch. And I'm going to call this the engrave layer. By the way, I just did this before I turned on the, the camera. <laughs> and I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, you'll see Baltic Birch 3 mil 1 8 engrave. It's added it automatically to the library. I will save that. So I have my engrave layer set. Now what I want to do is come up, click on my score, which is my CO1. I'm going to come back down. I'm going to click on 1 8 inch and I'm going to create new from layer. This one, same thickness, I want to call this my score and I want to click OK. And now you'll see under the 1 8th I have a score layer. I want to click Save and again under 1 8th I want my cut layer. So I'm going to go up top to CO2, highlight it, come back down, I have 1 8 inch here highlighted in the library and I want to create new from layer. Same thing, my 3 mil, 8th inch, and instead this is my cut layer. I'm going to click OK and now you'll see I have my cut, my engrave, and my score. I'm going to click Save. You have to click Save. And now it's in the library. And now I've got that in my library. It's that simple. So as I get to a point where I have at least some good final settings for now, until I gain more experience that I'm pretty happy with, I just keep adding them to the library. That way as I create different designs, instead of creating or going back through my notebook, I just have to click on my settings and assign it to the layer in that new design. And they're there. I hope you found that useful today. Thanks for sticking around if you did. If you have time, let me know what you think of the settings or if you have any advice or any differences or any changes that you think have created a better output for you on your Bolt. And I hope I get to see you again on the next one. Cheers.